Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We bless the name of God. Good morning. Morning, Stella. Morning, Zet. Morning, Maria. Morning, Mam Tanda. Good morning, Mam Cindy. Good morning, Meki. Good morning, Chantel. Good morning, Bazalwane. I hope you've had a good weekend, a good Mother's Day for those who are celebrating. Good morning. Good morning, Mamnun Antla. As you come, click the thumb. As you join us this morning, we bless the Lord. We bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Hallelujah. Good morning, Mentabi. Good morning, Sisanda. Good morning, Me. Bless the Lord. We enter, Father. We come into your gates this morning with thanksgiving and we enter your courts with praise. We want to thank you, Father. We come into the gate with thanksgiving. We thank you for life. We thank you, Father, for keeping us, preserving our souls throughout the night. We thank you, O oh God, for being God. We thank you for being faithful towards us. Psalm 100, verse 4. We are entering his gates. Even the priest had to enter the gates. Everyone, even the layman, had to enter the gates. And how do we enter the gates? We enter the gates with thanksgiving. We enter the gates with thanksgiving. And we enter his court with praise. We thank you, Father. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We exalt you, King of kings. We exalt you, Lord of lords. We come through the gates with thanksgiving. We don't come empty-handed, but we bring our gratitude. We bring our thanksgiving. We bring our offering. We bring our lives we open our mouths and we say, thank you, God. Thank you, Father. We are grateful for what you have done for us. We are grateful for the cross. We are grateful for the blood. We are coming through the gates with thanksgiving. Gratitude, Bazalwane, is so important when we come before the Lord. Father, we want to thank you. Father, we want to give you praise. Don't allow anything to take away your thanksgiving because when it hinders your thanksgiving, it hinders your entry into towards the presence of the Lord because as we enter the gates, our, our goal is the presence. We've been learning, Bazalwan, the goal is the glory, the goal is the presence, but we start here at the gate. Jesus is the gate. We thank you, Jesus, for your stripes. We thank you for your wounds. We thank you for laying down your life for us. We thank you for dying for us on the cross. We thank you for having staying in that grave for three days and arising and uh, coming back to life. We thank you, Jesus, for conquering sin, hell, and the grave so that we may have capacity to conquer these things ourselves so that we have capacity to walk in victory. That is why the Bible says we are more than conquerors because we are the ones who eat the spoils 
we eat from that which he has already fought for. He has fought for us. We enter into the gate with thanksgiving. We say, thank you, God. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Jesus, for even ascending up on high and, and giving gifts to men. We thank you, Father, for what you have done for us through Christ Jesus. We thank you that even now, Jesus is before the presence of the ancient of days. He lives to make intercession for us. We enter the gate with thanksgiving and we enter the court with praise. These are different dimensions, Bazalwani, of glory or ascending into glory. The gates and the court, the court is even closer. The gate brings us in. Imagine the tabernacle of Moses. Babkabasha has been teaching this weekend. Imagine the tabernacle of Moses. It has the outer court and it has the inner court, which is divided into two. The holy place and the holy of holies. Now we enter. The first place is that outer court. This is where we die. This is where we lay down our lives. This is where we put down the sacrifice. But before we even enter there, we come through the gate. He is Jesus. We come through him. He has made a way for us. He has made a way for us to enter into the presence of the Lord. So, Father, we thank you for Jesus, who is not who has not just made a way for us, but he is the way. He is the truth. And he is the life. We thank you, O oh Father, for Jesus. We thank you this morning for life. We thank you for truth this morning. We thank you, Father, that we have access into everything that you want us to partake into, Father God, because of Jesus. We thank you for eternal life. We thank you for victory over demons. We thank you for victory over sin. We thank you for victory over the flesh. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise, Father God. In the name of Jesus, we come into the court. We lay our lives down as the living sacrifice. We are the sacrifice. We are the offering. We lay it down on the altar. Siti Baba Masibe Nandi. Help us, Father, to be a sweet smelling server unto you, God. Help us to be that sacrifice that is undefiled. So we plead the blood of Jesus over our own lives. We say, Wash us, O Jesus, so that as we, even as we offer our lives, we are holy. We are acceptable. We are uncorruptible. We are, and we are not defiled in the name of Jesus. We ask, Father, that as we lay our lives down, we come through into the place of communion with you in the name of Jesus. See, the altar in the outer court makes a way for us to enter into the holy place and we partake of his presence, we partake of the spirit, we partake of the blood, and we we become that sweet-smelling server. And as we pray and we intercede from this place, the holy place, we enter into, we are ushered into the holy of holies. It takes time. It takes what happens in the outer court for us to be brought into the holy of holies. You cannot skip and say, when are you are there? No, we start here by dying daily. We start here by laying our lives. We start here by being defeated before the living God. We start here by offering ourselves in the name of Jesus. And we proceed. We are ushered into the holy place. We are ushered into the communion, communion with the Holy Spirit. He imparts into us. He fills us. He baptizes us. He renews us in the name of Jesus. And we eat of the bread, the show bread. We eat of his nature. As we eat, we become like him. 
We become one with the altar in the name of Jesus. And we come through with a coal from the outer court. We bring it in to that altar of incense and we burn that incense. It begins to arise into the presence of the Lord and it ushers us into the holy of holies, the holy where there is life, where there is life in the name of Jesus. Remember, taught those who don't know the teaching, go to the Saturday teaching. It says there are three curtains. The first one is at the gate. It is called the way. We enter into the way, through the way. And the second curtain into the holy place is called the truth. And we come in into the presence. He's, he's the holy of holies. We come in through the truth. In the name of Jesus. And the one that leads us into the holy place is called the life. This is where Bazalwani, Adam was from the beginning. In the name of Jesus. This is where Adam was. He enjoyed his life was flowing from the, from the presence of God. This is where Moses ended up in those 40 days where his very structure of the cells changed, that they started to shine. They held glory because he came into this place. This is where Jesus is, Bazalwan. This is where he is pleading for us before the mercy seat. This is where we are with Christ, in Christ, with God. We are in that place, in the spirit. However, our flesh still needs to be brought through daily, through the cross, through dying daily, dying daily, and communion with the Spirit daily. And we bring it, we bring ourselves to this place where we are already. We are there already in the Spirit. We are there with Christ seated. But the, the, because we are not dead, we are still in this life, we have to bring ourselves, the soul must be brought there. Daily, the soul must be brought there. So we, we bring ourselves there through dying, laying our lives down on the cross, carrying our cross daily, and we come through the truth. We come through the life, and we are brought to this place where we partake into life, where sickness cannot stick, where depression cannot stick, where fear cannot stick. Here, Bazalwan, there, there is nothing that is dying. There is life. Every dying thing, we left it there in the outer court and we brought ourselves into the communion with the Spirit of God and into the body of Christ and we bring ourselves through in the name of Jesus. So, Father, we thank you. Think about it. Thanksgiving. And praise can take you so long because this is the gates. We, we, we enter the gate with thanksgiving and, we, and we, we come into the court with praise. It's still the outer court. We, we praise him there. We, we make the noise there. We exalt him there. We give him all the glory and we give him all the praise. We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. We lay down our lives is the living sacrifice, spirit, soul, and body. May we become one with you even as we are on the earth in Jesus' mighty name. This morning, as I've been preparing, um, even from yesterday, just meditating about our com time of communion and also about the plan as we prepare for uh, the Feast of Pentecost or the Shavuot, uh, on the from the 17th, let me run through this quickly. From the 17th, six o'clock, we will begin our prayer in preparation for the day of Pentecost. Remember, Ascension Day is on the 18th. Jesus ascended on high. Acts chapter one tells us that he ascended, and before he ascended, he gave them instructions on what to do. And he gave them instructions of waiting. And he knew that 10 days later, 
the Father would bring the promise, Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God would be released to the first church. Now we are going to come into the pattern of their waiting from the 17th, that is from tomorrow until the uh, 27th or 28th, we will come into the pattern of waiting with our very being, Mazalwan. We want to come into this pattern of waiting. Maybe the Lord will allow us to partake of what he allowed them to partake into. In the name of Jesus, we are praying, Bazalwane, for a revival in, in our own lives, in our own personal lives. I shared something, a picture on the on my WhatsApp, where this person is like there is coal and there's a center coal, and he lights up the coal in the center, and that the, that coal allows it spreads its fire or its heat through the outer coals. We are praying, Bazalwane, that may revival begin with, with me. Father, as you, Jesus, as you gave those instructions for the disciples to wait, that is my, that's the instruction you are giving me now from the 17th to wait, to wait, to wait, Bazalwane. So we will meet together at six in the um, afternoon and we break that fast for the day. We break through communion and you, then you can eat. But let us observe a fast for the 10 days where we wait. When the Lord laid it in my heart a few weeks ago or a month ago, it, he said it's the wait, the wait the waiting, as in waiting, waiting. So we want the revival. We want it to begin with me. You want it to begin with you. And as the Lord fills you with the fire of revival, those next to you will not help but catch the fire. You know, revival, you don't tell anyone that it's revival. No, it, it, it's it's like the fire, the, the bush, the tree doesn't tell the next tree that it's revival. There is, they catch the flames. They catch the fire. So this is our prayer, Bazalwan, that Lord, as we gather, as we pray in these 10 days, we fast. Observe the fast that the Lord is leading you to observe. If it's uh, water only, observe that. If it's um, greens only without meat, observe that. Just observe the fast in the 10 days. And in the 10 days, we will break together at 6 o'clock. We will meet and break together in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Our prayer, I will share more. Uguti, we need the manifestation. That is what is in the heart of the Father for us. We need the manifestation of power in our generation. So we will press into prayer. Those who can fast, let us enter the fast for 10 days, we will enter the fast together. And we pray, Bazalwan, let nothing, let something break over us. Uh, uh, even on that 10th day, the day of Pentecost, let us, some will observe day of Pentecost as Pentecost Sunday. I'm not sure if it's the 28th or 29th. Don't observe that. We will observe that Pentecost on the Sabbath, the Saturday when we gather in the name of Jesus. So we got through that. So as I was preparing even yesterday, I had in my spirit, the Lord was saying, be born again. And I'm like, Lord, I'm born again. He said, be born again. Be truly born again. Being born again, Bazalone, ushers us into new life in, in all levels. Being born again is not a label that they are those of the born again church. No, being born again is, is something that we need to go through. Jesus told, and I will go through that scripture. Let's go to First Peter chapter 1. Because the new birth is what we need again. We need the new birth. The, the church needs to be born again. We need to be born again. 
not just by by name or by because I go to a certain church and I don't go to the church. We need to be truly, to be truly born again, Bazalan. We need to manifest a life of those who have been born again by the Spirit of God. What does that life look like? We need to experience that. We need to, to manifest that. It's just not about, I go to the church, so I'm born again. No, there is a manifestation in a life that you need to begin to live. And there is a path that you need to walk in to show that you are truly born again. Let's read 1 Peter 1 from verse 3. Bless be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again, has birthed us again, has caused us to be born again. God, through his abundance, abundant mercy, has got, he has birthed us. He has literally, God has traveled. How did God traveled, travel? God traveled through the cross when Jesus was on that cross being pierced. There was a birthing happening there. There were people coming through the wounds. There were people being born through the waters and through the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Those who, some of us were not there. All of us were not there. Some were there, but he was birthing nations. He was birthing us. He was birthing generations. Hallelujah. And it says he allowed, he, he begotten us again to a lively hope or living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So as he was birthing, he he, he allowed Jesus to, to come up from, from the grave to complete our birthing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need to be born again. Now, people who are born again, manifest differently from people who are not born again. See, I need you to, to wash your brain from the use of the word manifesting or manifestation in the new age uh, uh, understanding because a lot of these words have been stolen from us and we have also given up. But manifesting means to show up to shine, to, 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 to be seen, to come out from the darkness and into the light where you are seen. There is a manner of manifestation that people who are truly born again walk in. There is a path we walk in that is the path of light. Hallelujah. And it says here, he caused us to be born again. He caused us to come into the new birth. This new birth allows us to inherit incorrupt and undefiled inheritance. It says here, to into an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fades not away, reserved in heaven for us, who are kept by the power of God through faith to salvation, ready to be made manifest in the last day in the last days so that the being born again ushers us into an inheritance even as you live on the earth you live your spirit is partaking into that inheritance you are already partaking into the new nature into a place where you are now being restored back into communion with God. So the way you live on the earth, the way you walk out this life is different from the people who have not been born again and who have not been ushered back into the presence of his glory. Because this inheritance, his presence is our inheritance. He is our inheritance. There are things that we need to begin to walk in or walk out in our lives as evidence that we are born again. So being born again is just not something that I say, but it is a manifestation of a life that shows that I am a partaker in the divine nature. 
I am now partake. It's not something that will happen when I die. But as I live, as I sit here, I am partaking of the of divine nature. Being born again has allowed me to be here and there, to partake there and manifest here, to, to grab hold of something in the unseen realm and to manifest it in the sin realm. Let's go to John chapter 3 because we have shortchanged ourselves by using words, you know, loosely and weakening the power of these words. Being born again has been used loosely, but being born again, remember, Bazalwan, being born again, let me just read here in my notes, there is a birth that we are birthed there is a birthing, you know, that we need to go through. God births us. He allows us to be born again when we believe. We come into being born again, the newness of life, the partaker of divine nature. We need to go through this birth as we die daily and we walk in repentance and we lay down our lives. We allow, allow ourselves to be born again, 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 again. Daily we are being born again. Daily we are being saved. Daily we are brought and we are ushered into the presence of his glory. He transforms us. He changes us. It is in this new birth, unlike the former birth, that causes us to walk in the divine nature. See that the former birth, when we were born by our mothers, it, it, it gave us or it ushered us into a corruptible inheritance. It ushered us into a life of iniquity. But when we are born again, it ushers us into an incorruptible inheritance. It ushers us into divine nature. So unlike the former birth that caused us to be born into the ways of our forefathers. It caused us to be birthed in iniquity. This birth, this birth through the resurrection causes us to be ushered into the inheritance of our first estate. We come into that inheritance that God wanted us to inherit, wanted us to a, a grab hold of initially before sin. When we were in him, the inheritance of our first estate. We no longer manifest the corruptibility of our, of our genealogy, but we begin to partake in the newness of life. Our genes change as we partake into this divine nature. He changes our genealogy. He changes our genes. He changes our bloodline. He conforms us into the divine nature. Hallelujah. The kingdom that is not corrupt. What does Jesus say, say here Bazalwan, in John 3? He says to Nicodemus verse 3, Jesus answered and said to him, verily, verily, I say to you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Do you know that as we live on the earth, our eyes, the eyes of our spirit are meant to see the kingdom of God because what we see is what we are going to pray through into manifestation into this world, Bazalwan. What do you see, Jeremiah? What do you see? What you see is what you're going to prophesy. What you see is what you are going to speak. What you see is what you're going to confess. What you see is what you're going to declare. What does your declaration look like? Because your declarations and your speech, your words should manifest the fact that you are you have been born again into an inheritance that is incorruptible, that does not fade, and your eyes now see the kingdom. So if you do not see the kingdom and all you see is what is going on around you, all you see is the corruption and the chaos, all you see is the pain, and all you see is how life is unfair on you, all you see is the world, then you need to be born again. I need to be born again. 
being born again allows me to see the kingdom, not just to die and see God in glory, but as I walk on the earth, I walk as the one who sees the kingdom. I see the will of God and I pray things into alignment with the will of God. I pray things, I declare things into alignment with what I see. If what I see does not look like what is manifesting on the earth, I speak in those things that are not as if they were until they are on the earth. You must be born again. Except that you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom. You cannot see what God has. You cannot see the will of God. You cannot see what God has in store that you need to pray through. Remember, the kingdom of God must come. The will of God must be uh, must must be done on earth as it is in heaven. But there, are, there is a remnant, there are a people, there is a group of people that must sit differently from what everyone is seeing. Oh, the corruption. No, we see the incorruptible and we speak it forth. We say, Lord, yes, we see sickness. Father, we thank you for divine life. We thank you for health. We speak life. We speak health over our bodies. We speak life in Jesus' name over every member of our bodies. We thank you, Father, for life in our families. We thank you for, we see chaos. No, we see the order of God in heaven. We see the will of God. We see the protocol of heaven for families. And we speak it forth. And we say, Lord, let your kingdom come over my my family. We, we, we see things around us in the physical and we fear. We are full of anxiety. But when we are born again, we begin to see what God's, God has in store for us. We speak that forth in the name of Jesus. We speak ourselves into alignment. We speak situations into alignment with what we see, what we see in the kingdom that is incorruptible, the kingdom that cannot be shaken. Hallelujah. The kingdom that is an everlasting kingdom in the name of Jesus. Being born again allows us to see the kingdom while we are here on the earth. And our prayers are prayed through what we see. Our prayers sound like what we see in the name of Jesus. When we are born again or we are birthed, Again, through the resurrection, there is a transformation of the spirit of our mind where we are no longer under the control of spirits, but we are governed. Our mind is governed by the spirit of God. Do you know that your mind is like a control center of your life. If your mind is not transformed, you can be saved for 40 years. If the mind is not transformed, you'll continue to walk in corruptible ways. So Father, we want to thank you this morning for allowing us to be born again. Father, as we partake of the bread and we partake of this cup this morning, we, we pray, Father, Bind us to the mind of Christ. Birth us again. Lord, I want to be born again today. I want to be born again. I want to just not only receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior, but I want to walk in the new birth in the name of Jesus. I want to walk in the power of the new birth. I want to walk in the manifestation of the new birth in the name of Jesus the authority of the new birth in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let us partake, Bazalwan, as we eat of the Christ, our minds are being transformed to be like the mind of Christ daily, daily, daily in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the mind of Christ. Thank you for the new birth in Jesus' name. Bless you, Basalwani. Let us walk 
in the new birth. Let us walk in the new birth, not by word, but by manifestation. Let people experience you in your new birth. In Jesus' name, shalom, shalom. Let us meet tomorrow. Since we're going to be meeting at 6 in the evening, let us meet at 6. We're not going to be doing our 5 o'clock. We will remember we're starting our first 17th tomorrow at 6. So that will be our meeting point from tomorrow and for the rest of the 10 days in Jesus' mighty name. Bless you. Shalom, Bazalwan.